Awesome. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, greetings. Uh, looking forward to uh, presenting and working or providing the information on this uh, so summer study abroad opportunity in Paris. Uh, I'm John Jorgensen. I work with CEA Study Abroad, and we've had the pleasure of partnering with the um, International Programs and Engineering Office at the uh, University of Michigan. Uh, today, we'll be talking about this uh, six week long study abroad opportunity in Paris. Again, I'm John Jorgensen. Um, I work with CEA Study Abroad. I've been working with them for about uh, coming up on 15 years. Uh, I work with many universities ac across the United States, but uh, I've been connecting and engaging with the University of Michigan since about 2007. Um, also presenting today is Diane. Hello, welcome. I'm the Assistant Director at IPE um, and recently joined Michigan from the University of Pittsburgh, helping students study abroad. Um, and so I'm really excited about being the manager on this program. We could, we are hiring two new advisors. So um, the manager of this program could change um, as you move along with the process, um, but feel free to contact me at any time if you have questions, I'm happy to help. Just a, a quick overview. Uh, we'll be talking about the Paris program opportunity. It's a six week long summer program. Uh, the dates here are May 16th through June 25th. So a couple of weeks at the end of the winter uh, semester. Um, and um, important deadline for you to know is the application deadline for this program is February 14th. Still a couple months away, but it's, it's uh, important for you to start looking at um, you're and planning for your study abroad experience uh, this summer. It is an opportunity where you can earn up probably anywhere from six to seven credits, where you'd be taking one technical class along with a humanities class. And uh, some of you probably know what you're, why you want to study abroad, but these are some of the top eight reasons uh, why students uh, study abroad. I know myself, I probably check. Um, and we're impacted by many of these uh, these items here from you know expanding wanting to go see new parts of the world and, and take in different cultures and I definitely was uh, impacted um, and found new interest because of study abroad and then um, the great thing for you too is that you'll be able to study abroad and take in new cultures and see different parts of the, wor the world but you'll also be able to earn credits towards your degree uh, as you know, many of these courses that are uh, available to you are highly are required by um, uh, required for your degree. It'll give you an opportunity to um, you know get a basically like a twofer out of the deal. You'll be able to study abroad, but also get credits, and but also probably probably even get ahead on your degree plan. Um, so, and then uh, for those who are looking uh, looking ahead to the future and going to grad school, I know studying abroad is highly uh, look, uh, looked as very favorable for uh, uh, the graduate admissions process uh, for many of the grad schools out there. You probably wonder who CEA is. Uh, we're an organization, a third party organization that specializes in um, helping students study abroad. We've been partnering with the University of Michigan for uh, many years, I think since like 2005. Um, we work with them on the whole application and enrollment process. And we set up uh, programs where you'll be able to take courses for your academic credit, but also we establish and um, find housing for students. We build in um, a lot of activities and uh, that you can help you learn more about the culture, the country that you're gonna be going to, and we'll provide you cultural activities, excursions, um, and other activities, again, with the goal of helping you get an understanding of the, the city, country, and the culture that you'd be living in. On CEA, we, we have programs in 13 different countries and 22 different cities, uh, but with the uh, University of Michigan uh, School of Engineering, we have, they've reviewed and approved uh, four of our engineering locations, uh, including Rome, um, Prague and Buenos Aires, but, and, but today we're going to be talking about uh, Paris. One of the 
hot topics, obviously, uh, today, uh, or actually the last several months or about a year and a half, uh, is COVID. I just want to uh, put that, get the slide off uh, early in the presentation because uh, it might be top of mind and you might be thinking about it, um, is that uh, vaccinations are going to be required for students that do study abroad. Uh, and and um, looking ahead, most likely boosters are going to be required as well. But um, for just for um, while you're in in Paris studying abroad, we will we do already have safety protocols and procedures in place. So we'll have mass mandates, we'll have social distancing and other protocols in place. But rest assured, we're uh, we're ready uh, ready for you to come abroad, and we'll have these protocols in place. You'll be given information on these protocols prior to departure and then when you're on site. Uh, but we, you know, as you know, COVID continues to affect us, we will rest assured we'll have the safety uh, procedures and policies in place for you so you can help you have a positive uh, experience in, in Paris. So today, again, uh, we're talking about the engineering program at Paris. Uh, this is a kind of a, a slightly different model compared to the other three locations. Um, these are the technical courses that are available to you. Um, probabilistic methods and engineering, Calc 3, electrical circuits, differential equations, statics, and thermodynamics. Uh, the unique aspect to this program is that the probabilistic methods and engineering co uh, course is going to be taught by the University of Michigan uh, uh, faculty. Uh, two engineering faculty, which I'll present in the following slides, will be teaching this uh, the course. Uh, historically, this course has been taught in a different city outside of Paris, but uh, this coming year it's going to be taught in Paris, where you'll have an opportunity to not only take that course, but you also can um, take a humanities course through CEA. And these are the courses that are available that have already been reviewed and approved for you. So um, you can take Haute Couture in Paris, uh, French Civ, Sport and Culture in Contemporary France, Introduction of Global Climate Change, and uh, actually it should be Photography in Paris. But all these courses, the elective courses and the technical courses have been reviewed and approved. So rest assured they'll be able to transfer back toward your degree. Um, this slide is, uh, highlights uh, the first uh, University of Michigan professor that's going to be teaching. I'm not sure if any of you have had him yet or checked. He's actually uh, professor, professor Emeritus, but uh, he's a longtime professor at the University of Michigan. Um, highly, very well respected, but he, he definitely knows his stuff. So he, again, he'll be teaching the probabilistic method uh, course along with uh, Dr. Uh, Wayne Stark. He's currently teaching uh, on campus. Maybe you've seen him. But uh, his specialty is in electrical engineering and computer science. Uh, he'll be co-teaching along with uh, Dr. Um, uh, Winnick uh, this summer on the six-week program. The fun thing about uh, studying abroad and through CEA is we, where you're going to be studying is um, we, at a CEA study center, is, we have our study centers located in the central part of the city. So our faculty can spill out of our classrooms and use the city as a classroom. So, um, and through our courses, we build in these um, active learning activities where you can take uh, and, and learn through the lectures that you're gonna um, be attending at our study center in Paris and go and see like taking the theory and uh, content you're learning in the classroom and seeing it in action or where it has been put into action um, through uh, doing these site physics, for example, one of the one of the courses will be taking you to Pont de Normandie. It's outside of Paris, so it over goes over the the Seine River. Uh, you'll get a tour of the bridge, but also get to go into the balls balls of the of the bridge, where you can learn more about the engineering principles that were involved in in building this largest state bridge in uh, in Europe. Another opportunity is going to historical museums. Um, it's, it's, it's incredible how much France has influenced the world of engineering. Uh, through this Musée des Arts et Mires, uh, you'll be able to learn and see 
all what areas of engineering um, France has impacted uh, starting in, from the 1800s through they've impacted chemistry, math, engineering, uh, just to name a few. Uh, through this historical, uh, visiting this historical museum, you'll be able to see uh, things that were, you'll still be utilizing today that, that were originated and started in France. Also built into the program that help you get an uh, understanding of the, the culture and life, well, the lives of people who live in France. We build in excursions. Um, you'll be, these are some uh, locations that we've taken to students in the past, the lower valley outside of Paris, uh, Normandy, which is, um, you know, the site where uh, D-Day took place. Uh, Strasbourg is up on the, on the French uh, German border or Provence. Uh, these are just the same with you. We mix and match them up every, uh, every term, but um, this excursion opportunities will be part of your program fee. And so do take advantage of them. You might be going to locations you never thought of, but you'll be blown away by the, these sites and you'll be glad that you attended these excursions. Uh, also, the week, during the six week program, during the week, you'll have different cultural activities, again, with the goal of giving you a deep understanding of the way of life in, in France through the cooking workshops. We might have walking tours. Uh, we'll have, of course, we'll give you um, a language, uh, beginning uh, French language uh, seminar soon after you arrive to help you learn some key phrases that will help you navigate in and around uh, Paris. Uh, one of the first questions I get from students and also one of the first cultural impact uh, things that you'll be engaged with is your housing. Soon after we pick you up at the airport, we'll bring you to your housing. Uh, during the summer program, you'll be in uh, shared studio apartments, uh, which is here in the, the center uh, photograph. Uh, you'll be living in neighbor, French neighborhoods in and around uh, the CEA study center, which is uh, located in the, in the heart of Paris, about 10, 15 minute walk from Notre Dame Cathedral. Um, you'll be living with other CEA uh, students who are on this program or with other um, University of Michigan students. And you'll have access to uh, a full kitchen. And so you'll be able to dive into the local markets and get food and be able to prepare it at your apartment. Um, and um, but, and also you'll be located near public transportation and don't worry, you'll have Wi-Fi, so you'll be well connected with your uh, friends and family. Where are you gonna be studying? You'll see uh, has a study center, again, we're located in the heart of uh, Paris. Paris divided in what these different like districts or neighborhoods are called Otter dos Mons. Um, CEA is located in the third Otter dos Mons, but also is also known as the Marais district, it's a very eclectic neighborhood. Um, we have a study center there, we'll have five different classrooms. Uh, we've got computer lab, um, printing facilities. Of course, all of our uh, centers uh, uh, has Wi-Fi and all the classrooms have whiteboards and projectors, but um, it's located also very, just a couple blocks from the, the famous um, Pompidou Center. And it's very close to uh, the CEA, um, or not the CEA, but to, to the metro, a uh, metro stop. These are some photographs of the center. Uh, the photograph on the left is, uh, you'll go through these massive doors and as you walk through them, you'll enter a courtyard and straight ahead of you is, uh, you'll see the study center, which is a photograph on the right. Uh, we have all three, three floors and the basement where our classrooms and office spaces are taking place. It's a beautiful historical neighborhood. Uh, again, it's very close to Pompidou and Notre Dame. Uh, to get to Notre Dame, for example, you, you walk up those uh, doors, you take a, take a right and you take immediate left of them on the block and walk about, about 10 minutes and you'll hit the, the famous Notre Dame, just to give you an idea where you're located. It's, Here's a, a map of Paris. It, it might be a little bit uh, hard to see, but it, uh, bear with me here. Uh, CEA, so here's Notre Dame. CEA Study Center is just above there, just probably by the, this number three there, if you can see it. And then uh, the, the famous Louvre uh, Art Museum is about a 15, 20 minute walk from CEA. 
And if you continue around the, the river there, you can see the Eiffel Tower. That's probably from CEA about, about a 30 minute walk. And then there's the Arc de Triomphe. Um, again, you're, you're in a wonderful part of the city, close walking distance to a lot of these historical sites, but also there's public transportation, et cetera, all, all over the place to help you navigate in and around Paris. Uh, Diane, you want to talk in scholarships? Sure. We had a quick question too in the chat that I think it might make sense oh. to address right now. So um, uh, one student asked, it wasn't mentioned, who is the actual like university of record? So CEA is our study abroad provider, but John, do you want to explain just as quickly as you can, because we only have a, a about about 10 minutes left, who sure. is the sort of like university of record? Sure, sure. Uh, for those students that do take the uh, probabilistics course, uh, you'll get a uh, University of Michigan credit for that and um, ultimately a transcript. But the other technical courses uh, all have been reviewed and approved by our School of Record, which is the University of New Haven. Um, they, so you're, you'll get a transcript from the University of New Haven for the CEA taught technical courses, as well as the humanity courses that are being taught. Um, I hope that answers your question. So we, we partnered with them um, because they're known for their experiential learning, uh, which emulates or which we emulate through our study abroad uh, programs that, are, uh, and also a, a faculty review committee reviews all our courses and all of our faculty, including the engineering school. They review all of our syllabi. So ultimately, again, for the Technical courses and humanity courses are going to be a University of New Haven transcript. We had another good question. Um, I'm not sure if it's possible to go back in the presentation. Yep. To, uh, to the humanities courses. So one student asked, is oh. there a 300 level humanities course? And that would be the sports and culture in contemporary France or hot culture in Paris. If, you, if your question is, will that um, be sufficient for your depth requirement? That would definitely be a question for your academic advisor um, just to verify that. Um, but that does transfer in as a 300 level. Um, and um, someone asked, is there a page where I can access a detailed description of the humanity courses? Um, that's a great question. Um, I'm pretty, I, I need to double check, but if you would send me an email um, with the course you would like to see the syllabus for, I can share that with you. Um, but I don't think we've typically put that on our website as I'm assuming, John, it could change a little bit in terms of like some requirements, but um, if you're if you're looking for a detailed description of the courses, you can send me an email um, with that. And I do just want to quickly mention that the College of Engineering offers a number of funding opportunities. Um, these are things you can apply for once you've been accepted and committed to the program. Um, so we have um, our College of Engineering Go Global Fund. We have a blogger application if you want to blog about the program. Um, and then there are other uh, CEA scholarships you can apply for, John, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, every student that uh, gets uh, approved to attend this program uh, through the enrollment process, every student will be assigned. They're given a My CEA portal, or uh, basically it's a checklist of everything that um, and has links and information about everything relative to this program. And one of the items is our CEA scholarships. We have scholarships that are available uh, that just about any student will fall under. Uh, we provide a, um, a topic that we ask you to write a, like a four to 500 word essay and complete a short application. Um, and please do apply because we, uh, we have opportunities, money there for scholarships that do take advantage. It's amazing how many students that don't apply, but there is, they could potentially um, earn a scholarship for it. But just take a few minutes, maybe while you're at, at your coffee shop and just we're at, uh, uh, work out this um, short essay for us for an opportunity maybe to, to get a scholarship. Great, so I'll talk about the application process. 
Um, so you will be applying through MCompass, um, which I did in the chat um, include in case you haven't already visited that site. Um, you apply through our office and once you've been accepted, you will then uh, begin to um, hear from CEA. And as John mentioned, there's a portal you'll be a part of. Um, and so that would happen much after you've committed to the program. Um, we also would be doing a pre-departure orientation to help you prior to your to going abroad. Um, some of the next steps, um, I just wanna make sure you also realize who's eligible to apply for this program. So you must have a minimum GPA of 2.5. Um, a current U of M COE student in good standing. Um, obviously you have to be an undergraduate, um, which you would wanna be to fulfill these requirements. And then um, you, you can be a first year student to apply um, and there's no foreign language proficiency. Next slide. Um, so included in the program fee, which right now we have to be determined, um, because there's a couple of courses we're working on to just finalize um, how much the whole total cost of the program will be, but it will include tuition for two courses. Um, your required U of M health insurance. It will include the orientation I mentioned, your accommodations, um, emergency assistance, airport pickup, on-site orientation, welcome, opportunities for the excursions as we mentioned. But it's important for you as you're thinking about this program to understand what's not included in the fee. So while all of the, the program fee will be billed directly to your student account, um, you will wanna review our budget sheet, which should be um, updated on our MCompass site very soon. It will have estimates for out-of-pocket expenses, such as housing, or I'm sorry, not with this program, but airfare, food, um, personal expenses, so that as you're planning the entire cost of the program, you'll wanna keep in mind all those additional things that you'll need to budget for. And then um, the next steps, obviously finish your application. The program deadline is February 14th, but over break is a great time to finish your application. Um, you'll need to qualify for the program. As I mentioned, the qualifications, the other one is you must have a valid passport or have applied for a valid passport by February 14th. So if you're going home, you don't yet have a passport or your passport's expired, over break is the time to apply for your passport. Um, you, you need to have at least one year after the program deadline um, to make sure you have a valid passport. We also suggest if you're gonna apply for a passport anytime soon, please use the expedited process. It still could take seven weeks or longer um, to get it. We've heard some students it takes if they don't expedite it up to 12 weeks to get your passport. So we definitely want you to work on that as soon as you can. You're gonna to wanna, to, as I mentioned, choose one technical and one humanities course in your application. Um, your application will be reviewed and you will be notified of your acceptance one week after you um, apply the deadline. And students confirm, most likely we have a week here, but we're reconsidering up to two weeks to have you confirm your decision for the program. So you will be notified when you've been accepted how long you have before you confirm. Next slide. Um, and there are uh, two types of orientations. One's an online orientation and one is an in-person orientation you'll go through. We highly suggest you sign up for our newsletter. We're gonna have updated information about all of our programs. And we also suggest you attend an advising 101 session. You can find that on our advising uh, page on our website and also check our FAQ page. And if you're not a US citizen, please check the official website um, that should say for Paris um, or for, I mean, for France. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you do, um, if you are not a US citizen, you might need to get a visa um, if you don't already have one. Um, so that is something you'll need to look into and those costs obviously will be additional and IP does not um, assist with visa applications. 
Next slide. So actually, as I mentioned earlier today, um, I, I said that I was the advisor. I meant Matt is. Um, Matt and I are splitting sort of our uh, the entire portfolio right now because we're hiring two new advisors. So right now, if you do have a question and you want to meet with an advisor about this program, Matt is your advisor. Um, but you can feel free to email me if you have questions. Please don't hesitate. Um, but he would be the person if you're if you do want to reach out and have another. Uh, like information session about the program, he would be your person for um, engineering in Paris. And last but not least, some awesome pictures of our students studying abroad and time for your questions. What types of questions do you have for us? Feel free to put them in the chat or you can ask, unmute yourself and ask your questions. We have about three minutes. I would some mention are you're on <laughs> campus <laughs> and you're feeling stressed out and you want to come to our office, we have popcorn right outside my door and I can smell it and hear it. So if you're hungry and you're around our office, please come over from two to four today. We have popcorn ready to be eaten and it smells really good. So question on housing. Would housing be with other U of M students or any C? AAE, what's the AAE? I think he, I think the student means like who's in the housing. So you said other sure. students. Yeah, there'll be students on this program from many different universities. So um, you can, if you do know you're going with another University of Michigan student that you are friends with and you want to be a roommate, you can put that, uh, your fellow, your friend's name on the housing application preference form. But um, yeah, there's a possibility that you'll be um, paired with other um, engineering students from other schools throughout the United States, from in, in, institutions like um, you know Michigan State or Clemson or Cal Poly in California or um, University of Iowa. Just we get students from all over in many different universities. And then just really quick, we had a great question about financial aid. So what happens is that budget sheet that we will be finalizing on our website is the sheet you can go by when you talk with financial aid about your financial package and what can be um, included with your package and how your financial aid works for you. So um, you will be able to um, you know, talk with your financial advisor here on campus once that budget sheet is updated so that you understand how it might um, apply to you. But housing is included in the program cost. Great question. Any other questions? You're so welcome. Um, how competitive is the process? I'm glad you asked. Someone asked that in our last session. Um, so we are um, obviously reviewing applications um, and we to ensure people do qualify. Um, and we will be giving preference to students who are upper division students who this might be their last opportunity to apply to go abroad. Um, and we will be looking at your essays to make sure that they're thoughtful answers um, and really do indicate your um, willingness to continue with the program uh, to to be successful, um, but we're hoping you know that we we really don't know how many students are going to apply this summer due to the current pandemic. So I can't really mention how many spots there will be um, in the sense of how many applicants we'll see. But um, you know, obviously, you'll be communicated with regarding your application once we do review it. So I can't tell you how competitive until I see how many people apply. I hope that it's not a solid answer, but. <laughs> All right, well, if there aren't any other questions, um, we will be sending this out to the group and we appreciate your time today and we hope you found it helpful and uh, um, we hope to see your application. Have a great day.